If food is your artistic medium, then the dish is most certainly the canvas upon which your art is built. So before we get started styling, it's important to be mindful of what dish you're presenting your food on and how that's going to affect the outcome of your photos. So here we'll talk about a number of tips on choosing the right dish that sends the right message and makes your food look as photogenic as possible. We'll talk about how to build an economical collection of dishes so that you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars and break the bank building a collection. As we'll see, you really only need one or two of a few key items. And finally, we'll talk about what to do when eating out where you have virtually no control over the dish or the styling or the lighting. In its most basic sense, your dish is really your canvas. And there's a number of things that you want your canvas to achieve in any type of artistic medium. The first is that you want it to get out of the way. And in food, this is very important. You don't want someone to look at your picture and say, oh, the food is okay, but that's a really beautiful dish. You want it to highlight the food itself and sit in the background. You also want it to make the colors pop, which is what a canvas does, and that's one of the reasons we often use white dishes. And it's also important that your dish fits the size and the style of the type of food you're presenting in your photographs. But let's take a quick pause to talk about pattern dishes. You do not want your canvas to already have too much information that it drowns out the food. And I see this problem a lot when people try to take photographs on pattern dishes. And by all means, don't listen to me. I've actually used this false graph set in a few of my photo shoots, but it was very intentional and it's very rare. I almost always shoot on white because that allows the food and the styling and the colors to shine through rather than the dish. At the end of the day, you almost never want people to recognize the dish. You want them to recognize the food. So in that spirit, I'm going to give you three options of what colors you should use for your dish. The first is white. The second is white. But if you really want to get crazy and do something different, you could use a white dish too. Okay, again, you don't have to listen to me, but I would say 90% of the time that I use dishes in my shots, they're going to be white so that the food itself can tell the message and display the type of information and emotions that I want to draw out from my dish. Now given all of that, how do we choose the right dish for the right shot? What we really want is just something that looks natural. Because again, if it looks natural, it'll get out of the way and let the food do its job. So we want a dish to be a natural size. It looks kind of awkward if you have a giant dish with something really small in the middle. And it also looks awkward if you have a small dish with a mountain of food on it. So in general terms, you want it to be a natural size, something that you would naturally eat off of for that specific food item. You also want it to be a natural style in terms of a bowl for a soup or you know, a salad bowl for a salad or a plate with some dessert on it. You don't want the style of the dish to contrast with the type of food. So again, just keep it natural to what you would normally use. And finally, you want it to be a natural color. And as I've already talked about, this is most often going to be white, but there are occasions where I've used a pattern or a yellow dish or something a little more crazy, but that's rare and intentional. For the most part, you really want your dishes to be white. But one thing I've also been finding myself doing a lot lately is going dishless. If you have the type of food that's not really runny or watery or very messy, you can actually just put it right on your surface. In this case, these are our foam poster boards that I've covered in chalkboard paint, and I just put the superfood balls right on top of those. And as you can see in this picture, there's actually a little bit of sweat from these superfood balls that's coming out on the bottom of the picture. I couldn't get rid of that in post-production, and it kind of ruined this picture. So that is something to watch out for if you have runny food or something that's going to be watery. But for cookies or other types of food like this where it's not going to mess up your surface, it can be a lot of fun to shoot straight on the surface and leave the dish out altogether. If you walk into any food photographer's kitchen, it's absolutely going to look like a garage sale. There's just no way around that. It just comes with the territory. But I want to show you how to build a collection of dishes that gives you everything you need for really just a few dollars and without much clutter. What I have here is probably more than you need unless you really want to elevate yourself to a professional food photographer level. You just need a few key dishes. The ones in the front are the ones I use the most. Maybe a square plate or two, a bowl, um, another type of bowl, 
a ramekin, and just a few key dishes, maybe a clear mug, a clear cup. And what I do is I go to places like Home Goods or other discount home stores, and I'll buy one or two of each item. You don't need a full set, obviously, because you're usually just taking one or two plates of food at a time, so you don't need more dishes than that. And they each cost maybe two or three or at most four dollars. So even all this stuff here is really less than probably less than fifty dollars total that I've spent on dishes. And then I just tuck them away in a corner somewhere and forget about them until I need something. And what I did is I slowly built this collection over the course of several months. As I started out, I would say, ooh, I'd really like to have a square plate for this shot. So I'd go buy a one or two square plates. And then the next time I needed that square plate, I already had it. So I slowly built it. I didn't try to figure everything out at first. I just let it build naturally. And that's what I would suggest. Maybe give yourself a $20 or $30 budget. Go buy a few plates that you need on discount. And then that should get you most of the way. And if you need little pieces later on, you can buy those as needed. In food photography, there's often a lot of shortcuts and even illusions that make your job easier and make your food look more presentable. For example, a lot of times when I'm shooting food that's supposed to be hot, like pancakes, they've been actually frozen so that the whipped cream on top doesn't melt and it gives me more time to shoot the pictures. And there's a lot of little things you can do like that to make your job easier. And in this section on dishes, I'd like to show you the bowl trick, which I use a lot and I've seen a lot of other photographers use. So let's say you have a limited quantity of food and you have a bowl or two that you need to present this food in. What you can do is take your bowl, take another dish or some clean decorative rocks or some solid ice cubes or whatever it might be and put those at the bottom of the bowl. That way it takes up most of the space and you can put your salad on top. You only need a few tablespoons to make it look like you have a full and overflowing bowl of salad. So that's one thing I use a lot. No one will ever know and it can add a lot to the image. I want to talk in this section a little bit about what to do when eating out. I know a lot of you want to take pictures of food at restaurants. And in restaurants, you have virtually no control over the dish your food is presented on, over the way it's styled, over the lighting, or really any of the elements. And that can make it more difficult. But one thing I would recommend, if you're lucky enough to be in a restaurant that has natural lighting, try to take advantage of that. Sit by a window if you can. Ask the server or the hostess to seat you by a window. That way you'll get much better lighting and your pictures will come out better. And the biggest thing of all is don't be afraid to do whatever you need to do to get a better picture. Move your plate around, take some of the food off and put it on another dish, style it however you want, uh, move around to get the best lighting, stand up and be that annoying guy. Make your picture a priority before you eat the food and then forget about it and eat. But take a minute to do whatever needs to be done to get a good shot and don't be afraid to take good pictures even in this more difficult environment. In the homework for this lesson, I'd like you to do two things. First, look around your house for dishes that are simple and clean and that you might be able to use for food photography. You'd probably be surprised at how many things are lying around your house, uh, different dishes and props that you can use. So take a minute with the eye of a food photographer and see if there's anything you can set aside to use for food photography. And also, as I mentioned, I'd like you to start building your collection. If you have a $20 or $30 budget, go to a discount home store and buy just a few plates, bowls, and cups specifically to take good pictures on. Uh, you only need one or two of each item. Make sure they're clean, probably mostly white. A few just common dishes that, again, look really natural and that'll help you tell your story through your food and make your food look presentable.